What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is Earthmaster here checking in on this uh, Thanksgiving evening. November 26, 2020 is the date, about 7.57 p.m. West Coast time. And, uh, well, hopefully everyone had a good dinner out there. Uh, here with the family, we're going to do our Thanksgiving tomorrow. But uh, I ate pretty good, nonetheless, myself, uh, for not having a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> Let me tell you. Um, 4.5 earthquake out here around the, uh, right around the Philippines Island area. Right now, the latest quake on the globe there. Majority of this quake activity over here, uh, to the east in the red ring category, indicating some much older earthquake activity. Haven't seen too much movement over here along the western part of the Pacific. Some, uh, swarming and earthquake activity along the west coast to discuss. But other than that, not a whole lot of earthquake activity going on. In the global department, uh, there's the latest from the USGS folks there. Showing the swarming going on. We'll back out here, show you an overview. Southern California, Salton Sea, and the San Andreas Fault System stretching up here through Southern California. You got the Brawley Seismic Zone and also the Imperial Fault Zone, an extensional uh, fault boundary of the uh, plate boundary. Fault, what did I say there? Fault system of the plate boundary of the North American and the Pacific plate here. Very interesting area when it comes to plate tectonics and uh, at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault System there where a tremendous amount of stress has been built up over uh, quite a long time here and uh, just a matter of time before we see a release of pressure. Little earthquake swarm going on uh, over the last 24 hours. Most of this activity occurred today. Started off with a uh, some small microquakes followed up by a 3.6 earthquake. That's the latest quake in this uh, little area of activity. You can see the migration towards the north here by about well, 5,000 feet or so um, towards the Salton Sea area with some uh, microquake activity going on there but uh, 3.6 so far the latest quake there. We haven't seen a major increase in swarming. Uh, latest here on the map shows a 1. Uh, was that 1.4 well to the west by about five miles or so of the current swarm activity this is just an automatic review so potential uh, for it to be squashed I guess you know as far as like it being removed from the from the map here not for sure what would trigger it you know maybe it could be some other earthquakes nearby I don't know but uh, uh, so far this earthquake out here has not been reviewed we don't normally see a whole lot of earthquake activity out here. So if we do, uh, it's going to be interesting to watch to see what happens up here to the north. Uh, but for now, that's just kind of like an automatic preliminary earthquake from the uh, from the automate, automated system. So, so far, minus this one, about 18 earthquakes there over the last 24 hours. Uh, small swarm going on compared to the last couple days definitely uh, an increase in earthquake activity southeast of Palmdale oh, 3.1 near Little Rock not Arkansas but Little Rock California probably much not uh, uh, better not say nothing there but uh, that area there is on the western part of that plate boundary which is the San Andreas fault there the North American plate and the Pacific Plate over here to the west. Activity up here to the north uh, showing uh, diminishing activity as we have seen over the last couple days there near the Ridgecrest area and Mount Whitney. All pretty quiet up here. Some microquakes going on but uh, no major swarming. Same goes for up here in the Nevada area. This is kind of below average activity that we have uh, compared to activity that we have seen over the past few months. Uh, this is kind of just diminishing as well. Uh, including activity up here in Idaho. Not a whole lot going on up there. One little small earthquake, a 2.5, and not a whole lot to report throughout the Pacific Northwest. Into the uh, Yellowstone National Park area. Let's check that out real quick. Uh, zoom into that map there. Not a whole lot going on up there either, folks. A little small earthquake there. Well, uh, well, way, way, way earlier this morning, probably late last night, a little small earthquake up there, but no movement, no major quakes, no microquakes, anything really to report uh, within the last few hours. Looking very, very quiet. 
And the same goes for the trimmer map in the Pacific Northwest. You can see just about 28 epicenters of trimmer there in the northern Sacramento Valley. Not, uh, not a whole lot going on there. Pretty quiet. Yesterday we seen nothing. Nada. Zip zero. No tremor movement at all along the Cascadia subduction zone. So uh, we can pretty much say that for the uh, uh, the day today. 28 epicenters is nothing really uh, when it comes to uh, the potential for uh, tremor activity out here. Pretty quiet. Uh, the Brawley seismic zone there. A lot of folks not for sure what um, you know what that is. If it's just a separate fault system uh, or what it is but uh, the wiki wikipedia article here on the Brawley seismic zone talks about the geology of this area look at that that's pretty cool that little uh that little um let's see if we can see that on that map i just seen that uh, if we can get this thing to pop up here not for sure what what happened let me go back here a little bit uh i was looking at this uh little cyclone out here see that little circle there it's pretty neat looking uh, that to me it looks like the marine layer down there, but that's kind of interesting there seeing that little circle of uh, an area down there. Okay, uh, Brawley seismic zone represents the northernmost extension of the, of the spreading center axis associated with the East Pacific rise. Uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of specific details on it, um, but it does talk about the past volcanic and geothermal activity within that zone. Um, quite a bit of historical earthquakes and volcanoes involved in that. And it does talk about past earth earthquake swarms. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, kind of, kind of a, like I say, it's pretty much just an extensional fault system there of the, uh, of the uh, San Andreas Fault. It does talk about the specifics of it, the Brawley Seismic Zone. A right lateral strike slip, north-south trending, north dipping thrust, and south dipping left lateral and normal, both northeast trending is the fault set up there. Roughly about 15 kilometers, of course, the nearby communities of Brawley and Imperial. The most recent surface rupture uh, was back in 1975. Several quakes under the magnitude 5.0. Uh, looks like October 15th, 1979, they did have a M6.4 down there. Slip rate of about 20 mm a year, questionable. Uh, interval between major ruptures uncertain at this point. Rupture recurrence may depend greatly on uh, Imperial Fault Zone activity, which sits to the south there. So if we got more activity there in the southern part of the uh, seismic zone there of Southern Cal, uh, we could ultimately see that activity affect uh, the Brawley seismic zone. And then, of course, the San Andreas Fault up here. So right now, activity along the Imperial Fault system, pretty quiet. But it does show you um, how uh, one another does affect one another. Activity on one fault does affect um, some nearby and also um, at a distance there. It's always been... It's all, I've always believe that to be true whenever uh, it, on, on a small scale and also large scale when it comes to fault systems and the plate itself you got a major uh, earthquake down south say in uh, Fiji it ultimately affects the Pacific plate up north uh, and all around uh, the fault zone probably ruptures in a magnitude 6 event every 30 to 40 years or so along with its neighbor the Imperial fault zone the last such event was back in 1979 so we're looking at uh, oh, a pretty good 40 years or so right although not well documented minor rupture may also have occurred in 1940 and even in 1915 this is by no means a uh, represents a definite cycle but uh, no doubt the Brawley seismic zone will likely rupture again sometime in the first half of the 21st century there with a potential 6.0 magnitude quake in that area so you know you get a you get a 6.0 quake there, right on this Brawley seismic zone area. You kind of have to wonder what's going to happen up here to the to the north with the uh, that monster that's sleeping up here. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's coming. It's definitely coming. Let me tell you that. Uh, what else we got, folks? As far as global earthquake activity goes, it's relatively quiet. Like I mentioned on the earthquake 3D globe. 
even the activity out there in Hawaii kind of diminishing there with a 3.2 being the largest on this map. Of course, once we go down here, we can see a little bit of more, little bit of more, little bit more after shot or uh, swarming activity, I should say, in that region around the Kilauea volcano and also down south here. But uh, no major increase, noticeable increase, I would say, or cause con cause for concern at the moment there in the big island of Hawaii. All right, folks, have a good night. Uh, I'm out of here. Once again, happy Thanksgiving to all the folks out there that celebrate the holiday. I'll be celebrating mine tomorrow with the family. And... Um, yeah, hopefully you guys get some good sleep, right? Turkey? I always sleep excellent when I uh, after my turkey dinner. Maybe that's, that's what I should do. I always have a hard time sleeping at night. I'm thinking maybe I should switch up my diet from barbecue and all the time to, uh, uh, well, turkey. Maybe I should... Maybe I should load up my freezer with turkey. Probably sleep much better. I was looking at that earthquake right there near Chile. Not showing up on the USGS map yet, I believe. But definitely a sizable, maybe maybe like a 4 to 5 showing up on that live seismograph station there in the Chile area. And uh, not a big one. That may even be like a 3-pointer or so. But anyway... Have a good night, folks. We'll chat to you guys a little bit later. Stay safe.